John Wick, one of the greatest action series of the 21st century, and viral hit, a manhwa I can only describe as peak fiction. Now, if you're no strangers to the channel, you know I love both these series to pieces. I've gone on record multiple times putting viral hit in my top five manhwa of all time. And John Wick? It's John Wick, bro. The moment I go into a John Wick movie, I know I'm about to be in for two hours of all hype. Like, they are milking the hell out of this series. Like, a fifth movie's coming out, and after watching the fourth one literally last night, kind of questioning how that's gonna happen, but I'm here for the milking, bro. I need to watch The Continental. I hear that a John Wick anime is coming out. I'm super excited for that. So, all that to say, I, I love John Wick to pieces once again it's a fire series so imagine my reaction when i found out that the artist for viral hit and the artist for unholy blood another dope ass webtoon out there teamed up to make a john wick-esque manhwa so y'all know i had to read it and turns out i like it a lot so now i'm here to annoy you guys about it so without much further ado folks i am the black Macedonchi, and this is my experience through killer peter Oh, and before you ask, because I know you guys are all wondering, yes, the headband was necessary. Let me tell you a story. There are tons of incredibly powerful organizations all over the world, but you know what they all have in common? They're all afraid of one individual. His name is Peter. So our story begins very similar to how people hype up John Wick whenever they start talking about him. We see an assassin, in the process of getting murked, talking about this legendary killer named Peter. And from what this guy is saying, Peter is pretty much Baba Yaga. Back when he was on the field, he had a bunch of criminal organizations after him, he was a number one killer of all time, but because he acted out, now all these organizations are after him, and the money he saved up from doing all this killing has been stolen from right under his nose. So not only is he a target for all these organizations, he's also dead broke. That's already one huge difference from John Wick. If anything, John Wick was not, not broke. I don't know how much those gold coins are worth, but he had a ton of them. And I don't know, even in like the later movies, like in two and three and even four, when he was running for his life, he didn't even really feel like he was broke. It always felt like if money was an issue, Wick can get that solved pretty easily. But anyway, this dude's talking about how Peter was a legendary killer and how homie got robbed. Another fun fact about our hero is that he is a senior citizen in his 60s. So Peter's mad old and all these spry young criminal organizations can't even hope to catch my boy. But as this man is giving his whole beginning story, he's looking at the person who's about to kill him and he's like, you're Peter aren't you? And we see our protagonist wearing this really weird big helmet, but the part that kills me is that, don't get me wrong, homie got the drip, the suit is looking pristine, but how he got the suit on with the vans at the bottom? You know what? You know what? Nah, I'm not even gonna front. It's practical. I, I appreciate that. Sometimes in John Wick, I see these guys wearing these dope expensive shoes, and those probably look great for, you know, when you're out on the town, you don't have to do a lot of physical activity. But I don't know, dress shoes, I can't really get active in those. I like dancing. I can't dance like crazy in dress shoes. Sometimes the, the heel be slippery. I slip and fall and look like an idiot. Homie got Vans on, bro. He got that grip on him. If he needs to go free running, he's good. And if he needs to hop into a b-boy battle somewhere, he's also good. You could see his experience in his footwear. Meanwhile, homie who's about to get killed is wearing dress shoes. No wonder you tripped up, bro. Look at your shoes. Look at Peter's shoes. Learn from your mistakes. But as Peter's getting ready to kill him, this guy's like, but hold up. This doesn't make any sense. How are you, someone who has thousands of eyes on him at all times, how are you still alive? How are you even here getting ready to kill me? And this is where our protagonist speaks. He basically tells him, look, bro, you can have all the eyes you want on me but y'all are never gonna find me because the Peter you know, and he removes his helmet, but we can't see his face yet because you know, big reveal, we gotta wait till the end of the chapter for that. But we do see his victim's reaction, or I feel like calling him a victim is wrong. You know, he, he's an assassin. He, he, he did a lot of killing himself, not really a victim, more so his prey? Huh? Prey sounds kind of worse, but I, it, it just works better. But anyway, we see his prey's face and he's like, nah, this is impossible. You're Peter? But before we even get to see what happens next, we flash back to three months later. We see that Peter, Peter Bay is his full name, is now running a modest bookstore. You know, he mostly sells used books. He's chilling. But 
here's the kicker. You thought his life was messed up before? Nah, 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 it gets worse. Sadly, Peter has cancer. And because his gang robbed him of the money he rightfully owned, well, rightfully with huge quotation marks around that because he killed people for that money. But because they robbed him, he's not able to pay for his cancer treatment. So as he's walking around, you know, setting up his bookstore, we see that he's getting a call from what I'm assuming is his doctor. And the doctor's like, bro, you can't keep doing this. You're avoiding calls. You're not coming to your appointments. At this rate, you only have three months to live. So after we find all this out, we get some internal dialogue from Peter. He talks about how he's not really afraid of death. He's already lived all of it on the brink of death and how he devoted 50 years of his life to this company and doesn't regret a single moment of it. I call huge cap on this, but he already calls cap on himself because he contradicts himself like a couple of panels later. But as he's walking around his bookstore, he sees a book talking about, you know, it's a guidebook on how to take photos. So he's like, damn, one thing I wish I did was at least get my photo taken. And I don't know, I could be bugging, but I'm pretty sure this is another callback to John Wick. When I see this part, it reminds me of the one thing that John used to remember his late wife. It's a video of her and him just on a bridge laughing and shit and kissing and being lovey-dovey and whatever. John uses it to kind of go back to his life with his wife, while Peter looks at it as a way to think about, hey man, what if I didn't kill people for a living? What if I became a regular old man, took pictures? And once again, it adds to how sad this is because something as simple as taking a picture, something that we do all the time, Peter hasn't even been able to experience that, bro. That also goes to show how good he is at his job because how are you in your 60s and no one has ever gotten a picture or a video of you what the hell but as he's having all these thoughts he's disturbed by a new customer this girl from the high school nearby now homegirl comes off hella sus the first huge sign is how when she comes in there's a whole panel dedicated to peter not even looking at her just kind of contemplating what she might be here for and i don't know for me that was enough to get the red flags going so we're just gonna keep a sus meter a sus counter sorry right over here and we're just gonna count down all the things that you know made her come off as not your average customer so right now we at one boom and we could add another one because she just comes in asking for a middle school textbook no specific subject nothing just a middle school textbook but it's okay sus counter now at two so she's asking about middle school textbooks but because peter peter's also peeping game he starts interrogating her like a little bit like not really making it too hot and he's doing it with the biggest smile to make sure she's not suspect of anything so he's like oh you know you probably go to that high school you know the the, the one around the corner and um from your name tag i'm guessing you're a third year and homegirl's eating it up not denying a damn thing she's just like yeah yeah uh-huh that's me he turns around with a stack full of books plastic still on them and i don't know exactly how much this costs but it looks expensive bro so she's like oh damn i can't afford all this i only came here with 1000 won and you know how much a thousand won amounts to in u.s dollars a dollar bro huh? ma'am you came into a bookstore trying to buy textbooks with a dollar to your name. So we could just add another point to that sus counter because girl, what are you doing? But regardless of her lack of money, Peter just gives her the books for free because he's a great guy. Takes out the plastic and everything. He's like, look, they're practically used. So now you kind of have to take them. And as she's getting all flustered, starts calling him Surster by accident, which I'm just going to add another point to the sus counter because what? But he turns around to start packing her books, you know, fully shows his back to her. And he starts monologuing, but it's a monologue where you know the character knows exactly what's going on. He's like, look, I could tell you care about your younger sibling. You should do your best in your life to make sure that you take care of them because you don't want to live with any regrets. So in response, she's like, do you have any regrets, Surster? And Peter's like, well, you know, I'm old, so of course I have my fair share of regrets. I told y'all he was gonna contradict himself. But after he says this, we get a flashback of this guy in a suit taking away his daughter, and the person's like, you have no choice. This is the only way you and your daughter can live. So now we have some more motivation for Peter. Not only is he pissed that these guys robbed him, but his daughter, bro, 
it would be funny, but mind you, I'm only going off like the first two chapters, two, three chapters. It would be funny if this girl was his daughter and he just didn't recognize her. I mean, it's possible. She looks mad young in the flashback, so let me know what you think in the comments. Don't say anything if you already know, though. Don't, we don't want any spoilers here, but every, anybody who does not know about Killer Peter, I'd rather them watch this video and then go read it for themselves to figure all that stuff out. So after the flashback, Peter mentions how that's one regret he just can't let go. But as Homie's finishing his monologue, we see Homegirl standing on the table getting ready to stab our boy. And the funny thing about this is that Peter doesn't even care, bro. He doesn't even look back at her. All he says is, if you leave now, I won't have to kill you. So she's all shook. She's like, how did you know? Obviously, she wasn't paying attention to how many f up she had, but okay but peter almost as if he heard what she was thinking starts embarrassing her ass he's basically like listen girl i know everybody in this neighborhood i'm peter i i'm the legendary assassin of this world you think i don't know you were coming here talking about how you're a third year but the high school that just opened around here has only been open for two years how are you a third year bruh did you transfer and now you're the only third year in this school? That doesn't make any sense. On top of that, and this is the part I didn't even think about, he's like, also, the stench on your knife, bro. You think I don't smell death? For 50 years, I've been smelling death. So this whole thing is just hilarious, but crazy to me. This girl was ill-prepared for this crazy mission she was sent on, and you would think this organization would send somebody capable of doing the killing. You know, it's Peter. You're going after a legendary assassin who's not to be with and you send this amateur but back to the story even though she got embarrassed even though he let her know how she messed up she still tries to kill him like a buffoon but peter doesn't even try to defend himself he just looks at her gives her the average old man look low-key kind of funny how unmenacing he looks in this situation but then with the flip of a switch he activates his conqueror's hockey and she's taken aback bro she jumps off the table to retreat and peter continues talking like it's just regular shit He's like, look, just take the books. I could tell you weren't lying about your younger sibling. And he also mentions how he knows that she's from Young Wang Orphanage. He, he just kind of figured. And he's like, that's funny, because, you know, I'm from there too. And it turns out their methods have not changed. So she's confused. She's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, when you fail your volunteer service, big quotes on that, and then he dashes at her to push her out the way and says, then they kill you? and the target and as they're moving out the way we see two different assassins we'll call them assassin one and assassin two bust in from the roof with their guns ablazing now this is a perfect moment to talk about how incredible and i have to say incredible this art is to summarize my feelings this looks like a viral hit on steroids not only with the character designs also with the dynamic action scenes like the next few panels of this look amazing because of how they switch up the hypothetical camera angles in each scene like you start off with the worm's eye view of Peter and the girl running away from these two assassins coming in from above. Then they switch to a more heads-on angle when they show Peter and the girl dodging the bullets that they shoot. And then you go to a bird's eye view angle as you see Peter and the girl kind of traversing through the bookstore. It truly feels like this is a storyboard for an action movie, and I'm here for it. But unfortunately, even though the art is fire, Peter got shot in the altercation. Once he gets his bearings, he tries defending himself with his gun, but the same girl who tried killing him ends up being even more useless because she gets captured. Bro, how you start off as an amateur assassin who can't kill anyone because you don't do your research, and then you turn into the damsel of distress for the person you were trying to kill to save. But because he pauses, this guy, assassin number one, punches him through his gun and in his face, and this shit breaks his hands. Now, Peter, back in his heyday, he'd be fine. He'd be, he'd be chilling. He'd probably fix his fingers up and then start fighting these dudes. But because he's in his 60s, he got that cancer, his body he ain't working the way it used to so this one punch lays him out and as he's on the floor a new enemy appears i'm so sorry sir peter you may be a legend who's accomplished more than any of us can dream of but it looks like even legends can't escape cancer i'm sorry that is the wildest thing to say to your adversary after knowing they have cancer like screw you screw you new bad guy but anyway this is octoman the boss's informant the informant of the same guy who used to employ peter but since this guy's here peter's like what the f why do y'all want to kill me what's going on what is your problem with me 
So Octoman answers him since he's gonna kill him soon anyway. He's like, straight up, the boss don't like you anymore. There are too many people after his head, and on top of that, the bounty for him is out of this world. He says that the bounty on his head is 7.6 billion won, which amounts to 7.6 million dollars. Crazy amount of money. But the kicker to all this is that that is the exact amount that Peter saved up from killing all of his life. So these guys robbed him of his money and put that shit up as his bounty to get rid of him. So after saying that, Octoman's like, you see? You see how much money you're worth? So just let me kill you so I can be rich. Once again, screw you, Octoman. So Assassin 1 pulls up. By the way, Assassin 1 is a kickboxer. He starts comboing Peter for no reason. Peter's thrown to the back of the bookstore and they're getting ready to murder him. But then they forgot. Homie's always ready. He pulls out a flashbang, throws it, and dips. Afterwards, he ends up in a park, but it's honestly too late. He's bleeding out, his finger's broken, his face hurts from getting comboed, everything sucks. But as he's laying there dying, he starts thinking about how unfair this shit is. He mentions how because of his time in the Young Gwang Orphanage, when regular kids were out there, you know, making friends, finding love for the first time, all that good stuff, he was out here wiretapping, fighting against, and sometimes with terrorists, learning how to max out his stealth stat, he didn't get to do anything fun. So to have lived that whole life and then get treated like this afterwards, of course he's pissed. And during this whole tirade, he also has a flashback about how things changed when the new boss came in. Whoever this new boss is was talking about how Peter has gone senile and he's too old to be in the business, so they gotta kill him. But what's even weirder about this moment is that the same way how Peter's face was covered in a shadow in the first part of this chapter, his face is covered too. So now I'm wondering if what happens to Peter later on this chapter, if this guy has anything to do with it. But anyway, as Peter's ranting about his whole life, the last thought he has is of his daughter. And he's like, bruh, please not my money. That money, I'm assuming, was supposed to be for her. But he dies before he gets to do anything about it. With that, we move to Octoman's hideout, where we find Assassin 1 and Assassin 2 talking about how they almost got Peter. They could have been rich if they just killed him at that moment. And honestly, it's their own fault. Like, you didn't have to combo him when you guys had guns. Y'all could have just shot him. But as the assassins are talking, we find out assassin number one actually gave up a kickboxing title for this opportunity. You threw away a once in a lifetime opportunity like that to go after this master assassin that you're not even sure you'll be able to kill? Are you dumb? If it were me and I knew I can get that title, hell yeah, I'm getting that. Bro, I'm not risking my life killing the Baba Yaga, killing John Wick 2.0. Hell no, bro. Oh, buddy, 60s, that don't mean a thing. Yeah, sure, his body gave out on him and whatever, but like, they just had to jump on him because they had the girls a damsel and it was two assassins, not just one. But as we're talking about Peter, they're looking at a photo of him and they hear someone say, oh, wow, that was the first photo ever taken of me. And they turn to see some dude with black hair wearing Peter's clothes. At first they think it's Peter, but he's like, no, 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 wait, you look way too young to be Peter. So they assume he's just some dude who got lost. So they try telling him, you know, you should leave because we're not what you think we are. But Peter straight up like, enough talk, bring me to Octoman. So this lets the assassins know, oh, you are a part of this life. So now we gotta kill you. So assassin number one charges up his fist and Peter, bro, this man grabs that shit with one hand barehanded, like his hand is a boxing mitt or something. And of course, this guy who was in line to become a kickboxing champion is confused as hell. But Peter, he's like, oh, this that same fist you used to break my fingers and punch me in the face, heard you. So with his bare hand and just one, by the way, he crushes that. So Assassin 1 just lost like half of his health. So Assassin 2 tries to come in and help his boy out. But this dude stood even less of a chance. Our boy Peter hits him with, I kid you not, the raging demon. There are craters in my man's body, bro. Dude is dead. The last we see of him is a up hand in the corner of the next panel. So now Assassin 1 is kind of shook and he knows he can't just rely on his fist. So he pulls out a knife. And Peter, our boy Peter, goes on another monologue. And see, this is where I just leave. We already saw it with the girl when she tried like, you know, being mad, sneaky, and trying to kill him without him knowing. Homie is about to ruin your whole life, your whole career, everything. So Peter's like, using an edge weapon makes you third class. Being able to use any and all weapons make you second class. But inversely, being able to use anything as a weapon makes you first class. And this man pulls out an octopus tentacle from the pot they were using to cook. 
But since Assassin 1 obviously does not watch anime, he ignores the red flags and goes after Peter anyway. So Peter, with the swiftness, just laps the gun out of his hand with the tentacle. And this poor, poor man makes the mistake of turning around to try and get his knife. Homie left himself wide open at half health, and Peter has a full meter. So this dude grabs him by the neck with the octopus tentacle and swings him around the whole kitchen. And once again, the artist is going off because this panel looks incredible. But after swinging him around town, he quite literally cooks him by throwing him in the same pot they used to cook for whatever, I guess for the orphans. And wow, that, that's kind of sad. Just thought about it because they're probably, since they work for the orphanage too, most likely, they were probably making food for either food for homeless people or food for the orphans there. And now the orphans don't get any food. Kind of crazy. So assassin number one, barely alive, is like, who are you? So Peter picks up his photo and is like, ah, so this is the only picture you have of my face. Then as he starts burning it, he's like, y'all gonna try to go after me. But guess what? None of you are gonna find me because the Peter you knew is now dead. And we get a good look at young Peter's face and bro, it's over. It's over. I don't even have to read the rest of the manhwa to know that everybody this man opposes is getting bodied. Two big tells. One, homie got the Sharingan. You see them red eyes, bro? And two, this is a manhwa. This dude's pretty as hell, so he automatically gets the drip buff. And if you're familiar with solo leveling, you know that drip buff go kinda crazy. But folks, Peter is back in action. That is the end of chapter one. And to find out what happens next, you're gonna have to read the manhwa for yourself. So, closing thoughts? Definitely interested in reading more about this story, man. I had a great time reading it for the first time. Um, if you can't already tell how much I like it, this is the fourth time I'm recording this video. The fourth time. The first time, I felt like I could have done better. Second time, same thing. Third time, the lighting was just ass. So here I am again doing the recording because I really, really like this manhwa and I want you guys to enjoy it as much as I did. And one thing I really like is that they could have easily just been like, let's make a John Wick clone. Let's kind of copy and paste his story, but then add some different elements. Nah, it's more like they took the idea of John Wick and then created their own story off of that theme, if that makes sense. Though I joked around about like all the John Wick references and like calling him John Wick 2.0, he does feel like his own character, and I like that. And you already heard me talk about this a lot in the while we were reviewing it, but the art goes crazy. Story-wise, I'm really interested to see how this whole young thing is used in the plot, and also find out what happened to his daughter, if his daughter's even still alive. But yeah, I feel like they did a good job in setting a lot of plot points up in this first chapter to get first-time readers really thrilled to see what happens next. And you know, that's what you gotta do to make a good webtoon nowadays. But with that, if you are not already reading Killer Peter, let me know what you think about it now that I've talked about it. If you are currently reading it, let me know your thoughts of the story so far without getting into any spoilers. Let me know how you feel about this video. You know, let me know how you feel about the format. Do you want me to make more videos like this? Do you want me to do other things? Let me know. I definitely plan on doing, as I told you guys in like the other channel update videos, I definitely plan on doing more green screen stuff like this. Um, if you want to see more of me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell to stay notified. I don't only do manga and webtoon reviews, I also talk about video game lore and uh anime and stuff like that so if you're interested in that give me a give me a subscribe i almost said follow but that we're not on twitter huge shout out to all my wonderful guild mates thank you guys so much for your kind donations each month for those who are not aware the guild is my membership program on my website for as little as about two dollars a month you can gain access to a bunch of nice exclusive content like my soul leveling re-reaction that i'm doing uncensored manhwa reads videos that may never hit the channel and a bunch more so if you want to be a part of that and gain access to all that head to the link in my description below and right here as well and somewhere in the bottom in this area but with all that i am off this so as usual be easy stay lit stay healthy out there you look good and i hope you find a reason to smile today peace out fam